Hello everyone. My name is Erkin Sudek. Today um, I want to give a testimony uh, about one of my friends. Uh, I am a senior optical engineer uh, in the space optics uh, field and I live in Los Angeles, California. The person I want to testify today, uh, his name is Mutalit uh, Nurmamet, this, this person next to me. The, he came to the US in 2000 and they got two MBA degrees, of one from Northeastern University, another one uh, from California State University, Hayward. So when he moved to Hayward uh, from the Northeastern University, uh, we, we were living in San Ramon, also in Northern California. The Hayward and the San Ramon are uh, all, all located in Northern California. So we, we became very good friends, just like a brother, <coughs> a br br brother to each other. Um, Nurmamed, uh, Mutalib, uh, after he finished his all, uh, degrees in 2005, five, he went back home. Um, he is father of one of the wealthiest Uyghurs in East Turkestan. Actually, they didn't have any needs for money. Uh, his dad asked him to go back uh, to our homeland and serve the Uyghur people. Uh, that's the reason that he went back. Uh, while he was studying in the U.S., uh, they had two kids, as uh, was shown in this picture. And uh, after he went back and uh, started working uh, in Urumqi in East Turkestan, um, his kids couldn't go to school. The government didn't allow, him, allow them to go to school unless they withdraw their citizenship in the U.S. And uh, Mutalib did that, uh, withdrew the citizenships of both kids. And, uh, and that way he could, he, could be, uh, he, he could be able to send his kids to school. But uh, <clears throat> he was sent uh, to a concentration camp for nine months in 2018. And uh, <clears throat> um, he stayed in the concentration camp for about nine months. Uh, but he was released and uh, they, uh, died eight days after that in, in a Urumqi hospital. The cause is internal bleeding. Uh, he was only 41 years old when he died in December 2018. The, it is uh, one of the tragic stories that I have heard. I have heard more than 10 stories like this. Uh, this is just uh, one of them, but I, the, the uh, Mutalib is very dear to me and it has a big um, impact to me. Um, <clears throat> the, this is uh, another example I want to show you. This is an article uh, ju just uh, published yesterday by Radio Free Asia English program. Uh, this is uh, another uh, lady testifi testified uh, there. Let me read part, part of the article, uh, in, in the Reader for Asia's article. It says, <clears throat> uh, in 2000, in 2017, her husband, Pulat Ibrahim, was sent to an internment camp where authorities have detained as many as 1.8 million Uyghurs and other Muslim minorities accused of harboring strong religious views and the politically incorrect ideas beginning that year. In February of 2017, Ibrahim fell into a coma, was sent by camp authorities for 20 days of medical treatment, and then released to his home, where he died 10 days later. The information I'm getting is the people who got released uh, from the concentration camp, the first two months was a, was a test, basically. If they survive for the first two months, they can survive. Otherwise, a lot of, of people dying within two months of their 
release from the concentration camps. The, in my estimate, uh, the people who have died now close to like one million. Uh, I have some information about that. And uh, a lot of people, when I say this to, my, uh, to other people in my lecture presentations, people ask, why is that? Uh, why China, why CCP does this kind of things? <clears throat> I want to give you a little bit of information just as a clue. Uh, you can do further uh, study. Uh, this is a, uh, this is a um, person whose name is Dei Xu. He's a senior uh, military strategist for Chinese central government. He's a member of the Chinese central government, the CCP regime. Um, he did a field um, survey, field investigation in East Turkestan uh, from 2009 to 2011. And after that, <clears throat> he came to a conclusion that if U.S. and China goes to war, uh, U.S. can easily uh, arm 300 to 500,000 young Uyghur men, and these men will fight against the Chinese troops. There's a video, his lecture at, uh, at um, China's Defense University. He was, he's a professor there. Um, <clears throat> And uh, if you, if you, he says these things in his, um, that lecture, it is in the YouTube video. Um, and he also says he will continue his lobbying in the central government until central government does something about it. And uh, you can imagine central government did something about it. The, <clears throat> the bitter winter the online uh, journal uh, published an article um, in uh, December 17, 2018, in which they revealed that the central CCP regime has decided to uh, transport and disperse 500,000 Uyghurs into Han provinces in China. Look at the numbers. Look at what they just said and what the CCP decided. The, if you check, you will find uh, many articles published by uh, Bitter Winter that the most of the Uyghur people who were transferred and dispersed in Han provinces are young men, strong young men. So this is one of the tactics the CCP regime adapted to solve this problem, to, to solve the problem that they, she pointed out. Basically, get rid of the strong young Uyghur men who can fight against the China troops. <clears throat> there is another aspect I also want to mention to you. The, <clears throat> the China uses uh, three tactics when they decide to. Uh, uh, get, rid of, get rid of a people or, or an enemy. This is uh, the Asian tactics that lasted for more than 2,000 years and still are being used today. For example, the former Chinese uh, president Jiang Zemin uh, utilized these tactics when, when he dealt with Falun Gong practitioners. Uh, they are using the same tactics to deal with Uyghur, Uyghurs as well. Uh, these this tactics have uh, three uh, components. The first is defame their reputation. Second, destroy their economy. Third, exterminate their bodies. So, defame their reputation. Before China started uh, this uh, eradicating Uyghur this campaign, they, they had a, a very strong propaganda for many years depicting Uyghurs as, as terrorists, radical Islamists, or separatists. Uh, the CCP regime utilized 9-11 to achieve this goal. Before 9-11, there was no any terrorist, terrorism uh, incident in East Turkestan. 
but right on 9-11, everything became terrorist, terrorist attacks or terrorist, terrorism activities kind of things. So that's the defaming the Uyghur race. This is what China did. Destroy their economy. Now, if you look, if you do an examination, investigation, you will find all the Uyghur wealthy people gone. All the, most of the Uyghur uh, companies also gone. The Uyghur economy is completely died. And exterminates their bodies. The, today's, my testimony is basically related to that. The CCP is carrying out very severe torture inside the camps and the, and the prisons. And a lot of, of people dying there. And some of them getting released, but they are dying outside the prison or camps. Just several days later. Uh, as I said, I personally know more than 10 stories like this. And we have a lot of cases like this. Now, the, in the Bitter Winter article, I said about 500,000 people. But recently, there's another article that uh, more than 500,000 Uyghur kids were separated from their parents. And I got some information that uh, some of them were transferred and dispersed into Han Chinese provinces. You may wonder why. When I saw this photo, I was shocked. These are Uyghur young kids, like uh, four or five years old, wearing uh, military uniforms and uh, getting trained from uh, Chinese military. What they are doing? What, what do you, what, what uh, come to your mind when you see this picture? I thought that China is training these kids as future spy agents. Uyghur people look like just Europeans. And if you see on the street in Europe, for example, you don't recognize who is Uyghur, who is not. And this picture surprised me. This is only just one aspect. Um, the, the reason I'm pointing this out is we already lost close or more than one million Uyghurs just because of the torture in the camps and prisons and the dispersing and the tra tra transporting to other parts of China. Uh, we lost so many people. This is another clue I just want to give it to you. Now, I want to, in the previous testimony that I gave, uh, I mentioned several people. Uh, two of them, one is uh, I had Amon, my uh, middle school literature teacher. He was put in a concentration camp at the age of 78 in 2018. But he died early 2019 at the age of 78. I don't know if he died in the camp or at, at his house or in the hospital, but he was taken to a concentration camp. My another friend, Abbas Monias, he is a professional writer in Urumqi. He was a literature teacher before in Aksu number one middle school, but later he was promoted to Urumqi as a professional writer. He, ha he published more than 20 books. And he didn't need any re-education or vocational training. He had a very excellent uh, track record in his um, literary works but he was taken to concentration camps. And uh, recently, Shuhat Zaker said that the most of the students of the, the vocational training schools uh, have been graduated. But I want to tell you it's not. All those people are still in concentration camps and we still don't know whereabouts. Okay, um, that's all for today. Uh, I have uh, much more information, uh, but I, I will um, uh, find other opportunity to present them to you. Thank you very much for your attention.